Greg Maddox, born April 14th, 1966. My favorite pitcher of all time. An Aries, but an Aquarius moon. Let's go. Let's go. This is Drew with Trust the Process. So this video is not really about Greg Maddox or the 95 Atlanta Braves pitching staff, but but it kind of is. We're going to start off talking about them and just kind of explain why I'm making this video, especially right now. We're in the middle of a full moon. She looks absolutely incredible. So if you get a chance, just step outside and take a look because she is incredible. By the time this video gets uploaded, I don't know where she'll be, but but man, she is incredible right now. And then we're about two days away from Mercury Retrograde on the 29th, which, man, I don't know about you, but I'm already feeling this energy. It is, it is pretty intense. So sometimes for me to make these types of videos where I'm just kind of going off, right? This is just freestyle. Um, this is actually pretty difficult for me because my communication sometimes is already a challenge and then during these times it's even more difficult but i tend to learn a lot about myself when i make videos during this time so it's important that i kind of push through it if that makes sense maybe you'll resonate with this maybe you won't maybe even more so if you're an aquarius moon like me which is why i'm discussing greg maddox this evening so i'm working on this side project I haven't gotten to spend as much time on it as I would like, but I have been spending time when I do have time. And I've been looking a lot into players like Greg Maddox and the rest of that staff from the Atlanta Braves, specifically the 95 staff. Just what made them tick, why they were so good, why they worked so well together. And that specific staff really caught my attention when I looked at their birth charts. Now, I'm not going to break down the entire chart, but but just looking at the four pitchers, um, and I know that most would say that Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, John Smoltz, those three were like the, the three, but there was Steve Avery in the mix as well. As, as easily as he's forgotten, uh, he was a member of that staff. Uh, he just was surrounded by three future Hall of Famers, and uh, that's a tough... That's a tough act. But you look at these these guys and you had Greg Maddox, who was an airy sun, an Aquarius moon. You had Tom Glavin, an Aquarius sun, a Taurus moon. John Smoltz, a Taurus sun, a Leo moon, and Steve Avery, an airy sun, Leo moon. So just extremely fascinating when I look at these four guys and I'm sure they had their moments where they where they knocked heads, but but man, you talk about four just absolutely incredibly talented pitchers with those birth charts, like I there's no wonder why they worked so well together, why they did what they did, why they clicked, why they were, you know, so good on and off the field, they golfed together. They were just I mean, if, if you were a Braves fan in the 90s, like that was pretty special to watch these guys. And fortunately, I was lucky enough to get to see all four of these guys pitch live, which was pretty awesome. And I'm extremely thankful for that. But Greg Maddox was my guy. And that was like, man, that was my dude. And I always remember watching him in the dugouts on his off days. Watching him pitch was incredible. But seeing him in the dugout, was just something special. He always, you know, went from the contacts to the glasses. You'd see him with you know, some type of notebook. He was always, it was like he was, he was so studious. You know, he was always studying the game. He was just uh, intellectual type dude. And I really loved it. So it was fascinating when I'm watching him being interviewed and he's asked a question that I just, I felt it. Like I resonated not only with the question, but the way he answered the question. The reporter asked him, she said, why is it so difficult to get to know you? And I was just like, man, that's crazy. Because I feel like 
I feel like I'm that type of person. And it's like, well, everyone would like, I'm so easy to read, but really I'm, I'm impossible to read. I mean, sometimes I expect others to be like mind readers, but I really don't let anyone in. In fact, it's crazy, but I'm probably more vulnerable on this channel and and more open than I am with 95% of the people that I work with. Most people that I work with know nothing about my personal life. What I've gone through, how many kids I have, like that, that, they don't know anything. When people ask me, oh, what are you doing this week or you know, whatever, like I'm, no, not much. Like I really, I, I don't let anyone in. I'm not quite sure, you know, as I, I think about that, as I say it, you know, I'm sure that it's some type of guard that I put up, you know, I'm protecting myself in some way. Because I know that for myself, when I drop the walls, when I'm vulnerable with somebody, it's like, I don't have this halfway point, you know what I mean? Like. I can't go halfway with love. I can't go halfway with friendship. I can't go halfway with a job. I don't go halfway with anything in life. I'm either all in or I'm out. Because for me, going halfway with anything is pointless. Why? Why be in a relationship if you're getting half of what you deserve? Why work somewhere if you're not all in, if you're not ecstatic? Obviously, if you gotta pay bills, you gotta do what you gotta do. But for me, I wanna be somewhere where I feel alive. I wanna be in a relationship where I feel alive, where I'm loved. When I do that, I open myself up to being completely broken. If I drop those walls for someone, they could break me in half like that. So that's probably why I guard myself. I protect myself. And, um, and when I heard the interviewer ask him that question, it was just so fascinating. And listening to his response, you know, he was basically like, look, if you want to get inside, you know, you want to talk to me, we do that, you know, at the clubhouse or, you know, at the park. And, you know, that's work. And everything at home is home. And that's my personal life. And, and you know, it's going to stay there. And, um, and I like to think that that's because he's an Aquarius moon and that's why I feel that so much. But, uh, but it's just, it's interesting to, to see someone like that when, you know, although they're at a baseball park, you know, and, um, and they're not technically alone, he would be sitting, you know, in the dugout by himself and I would just watch him. And there was just something about that, that I would, that I would resonate with, that I would kind of feel. I almost wondered at times if Zach Grinke, <laughs> if he was uh, an Aquarius moon, but he's not. Um, I can't remember his his placement, but uh, but he's another extremely interesting character for sure. And maybe that just means that I'm I'm weird, but uh, but nevertheless, I really. Um, uh, I, I want to get into to talking some Zach Grinky at some point as well because he is definitely a character for sure. So if you're an Aquarius moon out there, you know, let me know. Like, is that something that you do? You know, do you completely guard yourself? Is that a Taurus thing? You know, is that just maybe you know you love extremely hard and you're protecting yourself thing? You know, um, because I know for myself. I'm I'm pretty emotional type dude, you know. I know I'm a little bit different when it comes to that. You know, I blame that on my grandmother for sure. 
God rest her soul, but man, she turned me into a sap, like big time. When I love, I love hard. And uh, and that's not easy, not especially nowadays. It's difficult. So many people are guarded. So many people really won't completely drop their walls and protect themselves. And uh, and they don't fully commit. It's not easy, but um, but regardless, um, I really don't even know why I decided to make this video again. I kind of feel like sometimes it's important for me to make these videos uh, during these times because uh, even though it's extremely difficult, it's actually really good for me to do it. Um, it helps me. Uh, it actually helps me understand myself sometimes whenever I kind of just speak through it, you know, it's almost like my therapy session. And, uh, and so it's important that, that I do it, whether I upload a video or I don't upload it. If I do this, uh, it actually helps me. So, um, but obviously, um, if I make a video like this and someone else can resonate or, uh, if they can take something from it, then that's even better. That's cool. Um, it's ironic that I'm rocking an old school Ray's hat here when um, I'm making a video talking about my uh, favorite pitcher of all time from my childhood baseball team, the Atlanta Braves. But hey, look, I grew up in Tampa, and if you grew up in a city where there was no professional baseball team in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, I mean... You had TBS and WGN, so if you wanted to watch baseball, it was a guarantee that the Cubs or the Braves were going to be on. Pick or choose which one you were going to go with. I chose the Braves because I had family in Atlanta. I got to go there pretty much every summer as a kid and, and watch the Braves, so uh, it was just it was an easy match for me, and uh, I always loved that team. I got a lot of love for that team for sure. I think Chipper Jones was a Taurus as well. I want to say it was like a May 15th Taurus. There was, was a lot of just really cool birthdays on that team. But uh, anyways, that's about all I got. Until next time, I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep moving forward. I'll always show us the process. And I will talk to you all later. I am out.